Welcome to the Creative Community. I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guest this time is artist Patricia Post. Patty, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. You're, you're not just a great artist, you're my neighbor in Nolita. That's right. <laughs> so uh, yes. I'm excited to welcome. have you here uh, on the, the stage. Um, we're going to talk about, about your work, and you've got some, some fantastic paintings. Um, Thank you. Th the last time we spoke was a, was a good while ago when uh, the creative community was going around to different houses for the artist tour. Yeah. Um, and we got a chance to go into your living room and upstairs and all over the place. Um, tell me a little bit about your, your workspace and your working conditions when you're painting. I have an upstairs studio that Tom, my husband, um, used to paint in the garage. Mm -hmm. And he turned that into a big working studio. He worked very large. And um, I'm a painter printmaker, so I, I do printmaking in the back room. I take that back room and oh, about every three months I print for an entire month. I get plates ready and oh, then wow. I just take the whole back room and the press is back there mm -hmm. um, and uh, turn it into a printmaking studio. And then um, the other, um, and then for three months I paint and then another month in the printmaking studio. Our home has always been, um, you know, a, a creative living space. Right. We're always involved in a thousand projects that that somehow work their way in and out of every room of the house. <laughs> I think, and so um, there's art everywhere. There and is art everywhere. There's <laughs> art everywhere. And then I was a teacher for 42 years, an art teacher and mm -hmm. dance. I taught. I was a dance director for 10 years also. So, um, yeah, we have um, life-size sculptures of my students in the home mm -hmm. that uh, part of a project I used to do. But it's, 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 a very, it's a very creative place. I mean, I, yeah. I, I was curious because when you're in amidst all that art, do you feel compelled to always be making more? Or do you feel like, well, <laughs> I sure have made a lot. Oh. I mean, uh, what's Well, uh, what's it's building up, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, that's part of it. I think, you know, um, you, you don't sell nearly what you make. Sure, so, yeah. so, and you're always making. It's, it's just that it's, it's in the nature of who we were, I think. It was in the nature of how we lived and how we thought. It's a natural, it's a natural process of growth. Art isn't always just made. Art, it, art grows. Mm -hmm. It grows out of a natural and imaginative process, which I think Tom and I were always cued into. Um, 42 years of teaching, mm -hmm. I mean, that was my life, mm -hmm. um, my teaching life. I had a home life too with a son and a husband who right. were also uh, very involved in creative kinds of activity. But the, just the act of creating itself is something that leads to new insights, right? I mean, that's the, the oh, nature absolutely. for me as a poet. I, I think sometimes we don't even know. Well, what is it Odin said? What do I know what I think till I see what right, I say? Right, right, right. You know, so, so I think as artists, I know that I work, and Tom did too, very intuitively. Um, we, we start, it's, it's a lot of improvisation mm -hmm. and um, sometimes a seed of something that can come from anywhere, as mm. some of the images will. We can, we can look to some of that. But, um, and then you start, and then you move into, I, I do a big warm-up process so that I can kind of just get warmed up because I want to shift into a zen place where I'm not. And it, what does the warm-up process entail? What do you do? Oh, I, I do a lot of um, abstract gestures, a lot of mark making, mm -hmm. you know, just play. Just Very, before you a really lot get of going. Uh -huh. play before uh -huh. I can get started. Then, you know, it can take a few hours, and Tom, Tom and I both painted in layers and in series. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, once I get just really warmed up, then I, I can go, I just, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's like Stephen King said, you know, you step into the page, you're not hungry, you're not tired. Mm -hmm. You are in, just in a whole other place. Mm -hmm. you, are, um, you are alive, and, and, and your entire practice, your entire toolbox, is there, but it all goes away so that the intuitive process can take mm -hmm. over. And the intuitive process is, is sharp and keen because of the practice, right, right, yeah. because of the tools, right. because of all the years of study, so that you can let go. And um, I, th I think I'm as surprised as, as anybody 
as to what happens what on the, eventually on the, on the happens campus, on yeah. campus. Yeah. yeah. So well, let's let's viewers are like, well, I want to see what's happening <laughs> what on this happening? campus. Let's take a look at, at the first image that you have, and you can tell us about this. Yeah. One thing I wanted to say too is that just recently, a good friend of mine, Laurie Slater, who's also a fine artist, um, looked at one of my announcements and then looked at my website and said, and then she sent me this email. I see that you are mastering a variety of styles, all while staying committed to presenting the figure and the human condition. Mm -hmm. So as we look at these images, I think that's a great introduction because I am a figurative artist. Uh, I always have yeah. been. Uh -huh. I, I love the human story. So this, I ran across a Persian um, saying. This is called the patient stone. And in Persian mythology, it was a, a black stone that was a mysterious stone that um, a person could go to and um, leave behind all of the pain, all of the problems, mm. all of the suffering. And when all of that had been absorbed by the stone, the stone would explode open and, and the person would be would released. Be free. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So a kind of release. So yeah. um, sometimes I work very narratively like this. I have taken this years of figure drawing. So I work with a continuous line, big, big, I paint like, uh, like a sculptor might sculpt. Mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. paint a drawing. Mm -hmm. I start with background, you know, layers of, of color, and then I, I do a quick, continuous line sketch of a figurative element, and then I go from there. So. Well, and in this image here, too, I mean, this is before that, that release has taken is place. Release, it, it's yes. it, it's a, a, you can see the great pain and tension and anxiety and almost terror there as the person tries to release uh, all their, and their suffering a, to that stone. It's a surrender to process, yeah, too. You yeah. know, it's a, yeah, we So we it's artistic in. metaphor as mm -hmm. well, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Trauma, one of the things I've discovered, um, because, uh, well, we'll, c it, we'll come back to this, actually, because there are images about the accident. We'll come back to that. Let's take let's, a let's look. Let's go to the next one. Um, this one I call Turning Toward Myth. She actually is, is part of a long series that, believe it or not, started with a very tiny little African mud mask. Mm. And I saw a woman from Bolinka, um, a tribe um, in Africa, um, in Mali, I think it's near Mali, So um, that Tom gave me for Christmas one year. And it was made out of mud, and it's a funerary um, ancestor's mask. I saw a woman, I, I, just, I felt a call to an ancient place um, to, to call me back to, to some sense of awareness. Mm -hmm. And so I did a whole series of, um, of, of drawings from this mask. And then from that mask, a face develops. A, I gave it a human face. And was that this face here? And that was this face here. Wow. In addition to that, I love birds. Birds have always been a personal symbol of mine. And I became fascinated by the breastbone of a bird there mm -hmm. and, and the wings. And she's, she's still feathering out. She's she still. absolutely it could be a shawl, but it could well be feathers as well. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, and that's um, nice but she's that. fierce. I, um, someone saw her once at a show I had, and he said, "Oh, she frightens me." And I, I she's fierce. She's um, she's incorruptible. She's, you know, she's um, she's coming back. Um, and she's strong. So part of it is, you know, there's this release into the stone, but it's our vulnerability, our ability to be so resilient. Mm -hmm within that vulnerable place that allows us to be also so strong. So I was very interested in that idea of um, a beautiful fierceness that comes from humility. Mm -hmm. Let's take so a look at the next image. Let's see what the next, yeah. So I did a series, I'm also a printmaker. Right, um, yeah. This is called Coming Into Fullness. And um, I love to layer and I, I came to printmaking as, as it really as a painter. Tom was a printmaker as well. We both did it for many years. So this is a, a layers of techniques, but the idea, again, of bringing the figure into fullness. And then the next one, um, this is called The Heart Uncovered. And I'm actually using pages of, um, I did the script program mm -hmm. um, for, for, uh, for one summer, which is a writing program. It is. It's a wonderful <laughs> program. At UCSB, right? Yeah. yeah, and I did a lot of writing with my high school art students. And so there are pages um, that I w of, of there that of my own writing. So the, the text is across the, the back of the figure, right? Right, yeah, so uh -huh. you, you put that down first, and I print the, the figure is actually an etching printed on top of a paper, which is, would be a chincolet. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, here we go again, you know, this idea of turning inward in order to reclaim something and then, and then turn outward again. So the next one. 
I also ran a dance company for 10 years while I was teaching. I love dance, and when I was um, at school at UCSB, I took every dance class I could get my mm -hmm, hands on. Mm -hmm. And so this idea of release again, and in this case with the feathers right. and, um, and, and, and movement, I think movement is, movement is life. And I love gesture. I think that's one reason why I paint the way I paint, and, and eventually you see it m more and more in my work. And this is, I've done so much work in the last 12 years. I retired 12 years ago mm -hmm. from 42 years of teaching. And, and I, you know, I'm always thinking about retirement myself. Did you find that you just exploded with your work then? Yes, but it took me four years to let go. Ah, I interesting. loved okay. teaching. Okay. I loved it. It was challenging and wonderful. I hear from kids from 40 years ago. Right. Um, they write, they visit. Um, I'm, I, I thought, okay, as long as the kids are going to be there, I'll be, I'll be okay. But yeah. Uh, it was my calling. It, it was it was it, it was the work I knew I was supposed mm -hmm. to do, and I suppose I suppose part of that gets woven into my artwork as well. I think I don't paint just well. I think they're beautiful, but not everybody does. <laughs> they, they may not be considered pretty kinds of things. They're not landscapes. They are landscapes. They're human landscapes. Right. They're emotional landscapes. But the, but but surely but your, your, all the teaching informs what you did. On yeah, yourself. I lived with stories. Yeah. I lived with kids. My okay. major was sociology and art, mm -hmm. so I was always interested in the human the human story and the mm -hmm. human heart, mm -hmm. and that it keeps showing up in the work. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at the next one. So, so this is called arriving at the dawn of a new day. Four years ago, Tom and I were walking a crosswalk, and we were hit by a car. I was in front, so I took a bad hit. Mm -hmm. Tom had, was behind me, so he had <clears throat> a broken um, collarbone and ribs, but I had a knockout concussion. I had a near-death out-of-body experience. I had a shattered kneecap, eventually um, shattered shoulder, um, blood clots. <laughs> and um, It was a horrible It was a horrible accident, accident. Yeah. yeah, and uh, PTSD. So um, it was interesting because after the accident, people kept saying, so... How is this going to inform your work? How right, is this going to sure. change your work? I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that I, that I didn't think I was coming back. Mm -hmm. um, but I did. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't paint about the accident for about two years. Mm -hmm. Too much expectation. Like, what right. is it going to look right, like now? Right. Is your palette going to change? My palette was always warm but deep, mm -hmm. dark but warm. For me, it was always a warm, dark. I mean, that's where the imagination was born, is mm -hmm. in the dark. The seeds grow underground, mm -hmm. and, and then they need light. So it's that combination of the yin and the yang. You know, we need it all. So um, this painting, uh, Coming to the Dawn of a New Day, was, to be, was part of what came uh, two years later as I was beginning to um, pull up out of that myself mm -hmm. and, and, and move on. So I feel this sense of you know blue and everything but also there's a sense of of someone rising in hope is oh, that yeah, meant to that's be in there a, the whole yeah. thing it's it's about an uprising okay yeah a coming forward a lifting up and then um warmth in the background and then no face because it's it's um it's an unknown future sure you know you're it's an open page again yeah which is where i am again now this one was called returning and um, this was uh, kind of directed toward that fire of the accident, mm -hmm. the, 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 and yet coming out of the flames of... Someone's emerging, that's what I get. Serious yeah, injury right. and um, yeah, pain and... Uh -huh. um, yeah, so I was beginning to start to paint towards some of that as so, well. So the figure is, is upright but a little hunched is still in pain? Or are they, are they emerging from that? What is yeah. It? yeah, finding the spine again. You finding know? the spine, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for the bones. And this is called Life Without Armor. What PTSD does is it takes away, it, it um, changes your perspective for, for a while. Mm -hmm. Actually, for a long time. You don't feel safe. And you anticipate hazard wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And um, so you, 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 you feel like you, you've lost some of that armor, so you have to kind of rebuild that again. But I was also interested, it was, there's a whole series I did, and you'll see a couple of them, in this idea of, of shadows mm -hmm. and um, a figure casting a shadow but then the shadow becoming metaphor for something else. Here's another one. This one's called Shadowed. And um, So you, uh, uh, let me go back to the PTSD. Uh, what were you doing? Because I can remember you 
at, at a certain point, walking around the neighborhood a little bit, and, and, and you, that must have been frightening too, cars whizzing around still. Oh, and you, you, uh, you disassociate, it's mm -hmm. fascinating. I couldn't cross the street for um, a long time. Um, when I, st I would look, mm -hmm. uh, I, I worked with a, a trauma specialist for two years. He said, I did in two years what it takes people five to six years to do because I worked so hard. Mm -hmm. I know how to work. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really helped me s this last year mm -hmm. since I lost Tom. But um, I would step onto, I would, st I would look, and then I'd step onto the crosswalk, and then I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't there. If something hit me, if something happened to me in the crosswalk, it would happen to somebody else because mm. I wasn't there. You weren't there, wow. No, so you, there's a, a tendency to disassociate. The other thing that trauma does is trauma waits for stillness. Mm. Um, so some kind of focused activity is really important. I know that I lost Tom a year ago in, in that year, this, well, actually, in 17 months already. Mm -hmm. It seems like yesterday. Um, that, that first year was just, I couldn't stop moving. I just, I had to keep moving. And I'm realizing that I, you know, at some, so I crashed, you know, in September, <laughs> um, just exhausted. But part of that is um, meditation is so important because mm -hmm. you're focused but aware, you know, you're, so that things can move in slowly. Any kind of focused activity, like the creative activity, I think that saved me as well in all kinds of ways because it's so focused so that you can be moving in a focused purposeful way and then w and then this trauma experience that keeps wanting to play with your brain mm -hmm. um, the, people talk about fight or flight with PTSD they forget to talk about freeze mm -hmm. basically the brain freezes and it just spins any kind of new activity you know ask me a question I was I'm not prepared for I wouldn't you know you just freeze <laughs> well p your brain spins mm -hmm. uh, where normally I would take the time to respond, there's a tendency to react instead of respond. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, this kind of focused uh, work is just, it's really been an important part of my healing from both um, the accident and from the loss of a spouse. Yeah, so uh, the people are watching and, and, and don't know, you've been, you've been referring to, to Tom, uh, your husband and fellow painter yeah. and, and someone that, that you were joined at the hip with, you know, spiritually, yeah. uh, physically in, in so many ways. And, um, you know, a great, a great guy too. Um, yeah, he was. That was one of the things about him. And so partly what, what viewers are seeing now is you dealing with this trauma of a, of a near-death accident. And then also, like you said, the loss of a spouse. And so yeah. it's a real big thing to recover it's from. It's a huge thing. Um, and thank God you've got your art to, yeah. to focus on because it's I read um, uh, A Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion, and um, it was, it was an, uh, I really, I mean, I resonated with the whole thing, but they, there were two writers mm -hmm. uh, on, a, on an international scale that Tom and I were not on, but we were both painters, mm -hmm. and they were both writers, and, we, and our lives were, I mean, he was a husband, a father, my best friend, father to a son, mm -hmm. my, our son, my best friend, but also we were creative right, partners. Right. Um, and that feedback and that conversation, that enlarged conversation. And um, Tom, was, Tom was a happy man, though. He, I mean, what come, keeps me going, holds me together, is that he lived the life he wanted to live. Mm -hmm. He was very contented. He was very happy. Um, and he found someone who, um, who loved that life, too. It was mm -hmm. a very creative, mm -hmm. inventive life. And so... Um, yeah, he reached his potential in many, many ways. Yeah, yeah, and his painting is fantastic. So we keep going here. Yeah, let's take a look at what Trying to we've got remember, next. I, oh, here. So, yeah, so then the other thing that starts to happen is with these shadows. I was working with these shadows images, and then, so then this one's called Undaunted. So, uh, shadows in all kinds of ways. And um, the fact that we can pull in our shadow, the shadow side of our lives, whatever that happens to be. Mm -hmm. And we all have them those difficulties and we can we can be resilient and overcome. So then the next series, as you can, we'll go to the next one. So this is called um, Understanding What's at Stake. I became very concerned about the world around me as well, about what was happening to the earth. So th this is a combination of other things that are gonna come up next. I was also concerned about the migration of peoples around the world that are being pushed by war and peace, I mean war and poverty mm -hmm. and injustice. 
this one's called Hiding in the Shadows. I was interested in, in, in our immigration problem that we were dealing with here. Well, I'm gonna, let's pause on this one too because you, you, you started off by talking about the physical and the gestural. Um, this clearly is all about that in it's addition to whatever mm -hmm. uh, political ramifications exactly. it might have. Um, exactly. Are you working from a model here? Or what, what's Sketches. Sketches, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I mean, I'm using my hands to sort of uh, mimic what I see there on the screen, but it, it's, it's, it's pain, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's discomfort, it's, it, it's, this is a figure that's not at rest, right? right? And he's confined. Confined. He, he's confined, there's no space, and he can't move. He has to hide in shadows because um, he's been dispossessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, alive in Wild Places is one of my favorite pieces in Tom too. Actually, the face in the center is a ghost in printmaking. We have, uh, you, you ink a plate and you print it and there's always ink left on the plate. So then I would take that plate and I'd print it on Chinese rice paper and that would be the ghost. The original print is very black and very white mm -hmm. and she stands alone. Um, I took the ghost and then I created this monotype of the ghost. And, um, and you wrote a poem to this piece mm -hmm. when the printmakers had a show at Channing Peak and invited right, poets sure to did, come in and yeah. choose a piece. You wrote a beautiful piece to her. I, I was very touched by it. Um, no, I, nothing about her. Um, you, you Other than what you can see there, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, you know, it's interesting that you have this, this ghostly figure in the center, and then there's quite a lot of colorful uh, painting mm -hmm. on the side of it, obviously, well, the orange. What, right. how, how does that work into your conception of the piece overall? Again, that idea of the warmth within these darker places. This one's called Memories and Dreams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, looking back to the things we had, and, and there's landscape here as well, down right, below. Right, down below. And all of the images, and these are all, uh, um, these are all original images that I'm, I'm shinkulaying into the print. These prints have maybe 20, layers of ink on them wow so that i'm building and building and building as i print them and i you know honestly so much of it is so intuitive it, it sometimes it's only afterward that you look back and you say what was i thinking at the time what was going on at the time um you, you're co i'm constantly responding mm -hmm. and with printmaking you know e as long as i've been printmaking you know you, you're putting the ink down and you think you can read you think you can read what's going to happen mm -hmm. and and you know it's always a surprise you pull the paper up and the is it always a happy surprise? Not necessarily, I would guess. Well, it's, it's, it's not always what you're expecting. <laughs> okay. And then now it's something new to respond right, to. Right, right. And so, um, yeah, so then now, you, now you've got a whole new set of marks, a whole new, a whole new vision that's, that's occurring. So, so much of it is, is intuitive, but I, I really believe that we're always kind of, at least for me, whatever is going on in, inside of me or in my head or that I'm not even always totally aware of is just finding it's somehow its making its way out mm -hmm. to them. And how, so. how, how big are those prints? So we'll go back uh, to that last 20 by 24. They're big. Okay, so they're pretty big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. and are you ideally are they framed or are they are they hung just like this? How, how no, do they're you, framed. They are framed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Under glass. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's one of my favorites. Yeah, they're both fantastic. Alive in wild places. Um, then this is called um, Ashes in Silence. And what is this one? Well, it's it's a figure with you know with fire. Mm -hmm. um, we were we've had some tough fires. We sure here. have, haven't we? Yes, we have. <laughs> and so um, yeah, again, this is a combination of techniques, etching and um, <coughs> and um, gum Arabic prints um, from my own drawings. Right. And then layers and layers of ink. Um, sort of working around, but it's also, you know, the fire of the creative heart, too. Mm -hmm. The fire can be um, interpreted many ways, so, you know, it's fire that's keeping me, you know, it, my spirit is strong, the, my creative heart is very deep. I think it's those kinds of things that are holding me together for sure these days, because it's tough yeah. losing a partner. Uh, I'm going to hold on, on to the moment of fire, though, just for a second, because, um, Again, you know, you and I live in, in the same neighborhood, and our neighborhood is frequently <laughs> threatened by We've wildfires. We've had to evacuate, yes. We've had to evacuate. Now, when I'm evacuating, I can take my poems in, in digital form really easily, but I have published a lot of books and in, uh, poems in literary magazines, so I'm leaving behind, you know, shelves and shelves of things that I've written, 
and I know your house, <laughs> you can't carry all that stuff yeah. away. What is that like for you to evacuate knowing that your life's work could be swept down by the K fire, the holiday fire, which was so close to your house? Uh, how, did, how, does it, how do you respond well, to that? It happened to me once before. I happened to in my classroom. I've been teaching for 30, 30 years. I had 30 years of my work, 30 years of student work. I had 30 years of resources. I had 30 years of an incredible nationally recognized art program. Mm -hmm. And I lost it all. Yeah. Everything gone. Um, it was devastating for the kids. It took me two years before I could just even get to where what I had lost because I had, they had lost. Right. They lost everything too. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, you build again. You, you build paint again. again. Yeah. It's the phoenix. I, well, I father leaned over and whispered in my ear. He said, remember the phoenix. And so we did. We invoked the metaphor. I believe in metaphor. I believe, I believe in metaphor. Because we, we, the next year, my kids and I, we made 85 20-foot birds out of their bodies. And mm -hmm. we had design teams. And we made headdresses. And we made birds. And we made wings. And we had this whole presentation where they would open their wings and they all wrote we did a lot of writing as a way of healing and they all talked about the process the creative process of working back and building back and and um, reclaiming spirit though the physical part of that was gone mm -hmm. and then i had a new classroom i had to build a new classroom you got a new physical space, i yeah. had kids coming that first year from 10 20 years ago they would run in they would say, we just want to know that whatever we had is still here. Mm -hmm. And it, the legacy. So the legacy never gets lost. And that is actually, we've run out of time, but that's a beautiful way to end. The legacy is never lost and, and the, the, mm -hmm. the sense that we're always going back and, and, and recreating. Patty, it has been a real pleasure oh, to talk you. with you and to, to look at your fantastic work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a been pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me too. The Creative Community is produced here in Santa Barbara with a generous grant from the Diana and Simon Robb Foundation. It's also produced in, as a co-production with Caps Media in Ventura. I'm your host, David Starkey, and we'll see you next time.